That is very clear. Uh, now, back at Yeshiahu, or Isaiah 65, we look at verse 11, which is going to see something very interesting. Actually, first, let's go to verse 9. It says, And I shall bring forth a seed. I want you to remember this, because this concept is going to be important later, about seeds and wheat and tares and various aspects. A seed from Jacob and from Yahuda, the tribe which we call Judah. Now, this is talking about Messiah. An heir of my mountains, and my chosen one shall inherit it. And my servants dwell there, and Sharon shall be a fold of flocks, and the valley of Achor a place of herds to lie down for my people who have sought me. And then verse 11, I want you to pay close attention to this. If you've got a King James, it's going to read slightly different. I want you to do a little bit of research on what I'm going to tell you. It says, but you are those who forsake Yahuwah, who prepare my set-apart mountain, who prepare a table for, and your King James is going to say, truth, or for that truth. But if you look at this word in the Strong's Concordance, it is Hebrew number 1409, and the word is Gimel and Dalet. And Gimel and Dalet is pronounced by Jews today, if you ask them, as God. What a shocker. So these people this whole time, we've been calling the Father God, we've been calling Him Lord, we've been calling these different things out of ignorance. Yahuwah has forbid us to do this. And Yahuwah tells us this is evil in his eyes. And those who call him God and many, this is the, the, the next thing, who fulfill, who pour out a drink offering for many, those who are doing this, he says, are those who forsake Yahuwah. Okay? Now, I understand that most of us did not know this. And I understand that we don't speak Hebrew, all of us. But, uh, friends, again, as I said before, all those names of those fallen angels, the, the New Testament tells us that the deities of the other peoples are demons and devils. So it's very important to understand that you have been invoking the names of demons and devils your whole life, whether ignorantly or not. The book of Deuteronomy 18, verse 19, tells us that anybody who prophesies by the name of the Lord, that it, it, that's what it says in King James. But the word says, Yahuwah. Whoever prophesies through the name of Yahuwah, if it comes to pass, then that's the word of Yahuwah. But if it doesn't, that's not the word of Yahuwah. Okay? So it's under, you need to understand the difference between the word Lord and Yahuwah. Because, again, it means Baal. And if you look at the very next, the next part of that verse, it says, And any man who prophesies in another name of another mighty one, surely that being shall be put to death. Okay? So if the being is put to death, for prophesying through the names of other mighty ones. So you got to think about this thing. If you were in the camp during Moshe's time, the man that we call Moses, if you were in the camp at that time, you came to him and you said, you know, uh, God told me this or this or such and such, you have been stoned to death, ladies and gentlemen. It's very important to understand this. Now you're saying, Mark, this is really harsh. What I'm telling you now, you must repent because the ignorance is no longer. You've heard this. You have the access to the information, whether you look at it or not, I've spoken the truth, and you can look at this and you can examine it. Now's the time to repent. For all men must call on the name of Yahuwah to be saved, as the scriptures have said in the book of Joel, chapter 2. And it shall be that everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Yerushalayim there should be an escape, as Yahuwah has said and among the survivors whom Yahuwah calls. Okay, in the book of Romans chapter 10, and we're going to start with verse 11, but to just give you a little understanding, you know, uh, Shaul here is, is writing a letter to the Romans explaining salvation. And in verse 9, he tells them that if you will confess with your mouth the Master Yahushua and believe in your heart that Elohim has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So if you, if you notice when you read the scriptures, You'll notice the apostles are always preaching the resurrection. They're always preaching the same concepts over and over and over. But let's, let's go on down to verse 12. Now, this is the words of Shaul, Paul, and he's writing again to the Romans. He's not writing to his brothers and sisters who are Hebrews. Okay? And he says this, he says, Because there is no distinction between the Yahudim, or what people have, have labeled Jew, but their heritage being of Yehuda, there's no difference between them and the Greeks, for the same master of all is rich to all those calling upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of Yahuwah shall be saved. And you'll notice in the scriptures, 
that he's quoting the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 31. I'm sure that in the footnotes it even tells you of your own scriptures. And then he says this in verse 14. I want you to think about this really hard when you read it. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Christian friends, I know you've never heard this. How will you call on him in whom you have not believed? And how shall they believe in him who they have not heard? You've never heard of Yahuwah, more than likely, if you're hearing this and you find yourself with a Christian faith. But don't be scared of this. This is the truth of Yahuwah. And if you truly love him, you will forsake calling on God and calling on Baal and all those pagan deities. And you will begin to call on the name of Yahuwah. And then he says, And how shall they believe in him if they have not heard? And how shall they hear without one proclaiming? And today I'm proclaiming the good news, the Basora, to you of Yahushua, not representing myself, but speaking boldly the testimony of Yahushua, knowing that it has the power to change your life unto salvation and unto the resurrection, that he will seal you. And then it says, And how shall they proclaim if they are not sent? And we are sent to give you this good news. It says, As it has been written, How pleasant are the feet of those who bring the good news of peace, who bring the good news of the good. Now this, I believe, is speaking directly of the Son, because honestly, my feet aren't blessed of anything. I'm giving you good news. I'm telling you good tidings, but it's His feet. It's all about Him. It's all about Him. It's all about Him. If you don't understand that, then my friends, your head knowledge is not going to get you salvation. You understand that we're not trying to preach to you head knowledge. We're sharing things that we've learned, but we're not trying to tell you that knowledge will save you. We're telling you that the knowledge of Yahuwah, only Him, only He can save you. So begin to call on him and he will give you salvation. Again, that was to the Romans. It's not in the book of Hebrews. It's, you know, it's, it's directly to Romans. He's telling the Romans, you've never heard of our mighty one. You've never heard of Yahuwah. And now today, I am going to make this known to you. And Paul does a similar thing in the book of Acts, chapter 17. If we will look at, at, at this, uh, this teaching that he's given, we're going to actually, uh, I'm actually going to start with verse... Uh, 18. And some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers encountered him, and some were saying, What does this babbler wish to say? Others said, He seems to be a proclaimer of strange mighty ones. You understand that they didn't perceive Yahuwah, and they say strange mighty ones. Many. But Yahuwah says he is one. They didn't understand. They'd never heard. They had not received the message, just as those that he's talking about in the book of Romans. How will you call on him who you've never heard? How will you believe in him who's not even been preached of? You've never even heard these matters. So they didn't understand that he was a, they said he was a proclaimer of strange mighty ones. Because of them, he brought the good news. Yahushua and the resurrection. Notice resurrection again. We're seeing this pattern over and over and over in Scripture so many times that I don't even have the time tonight to go through it all. Okay, if we go to the verse of, let's go to the verse 22. And this is in the same context, and it says, And having stood in the midst of Mars Hill, is what King James says, Shaul said, Men of Athens, I see that you are very religious in every matter. For passing through and observing the objects of your worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To the unknown mighty one. Not knowing then whom you worship, I make him known to you. Now, Shaul used this as a, a way to engage the people. We have to find creative ways to engage the pagan people and the people who've never heard. We have to find a concrete way that we can explain this. And he was basically saying, I see that you worship many things, that you're very religious, you're very sincere in your religion, and you even realize within your religion you are missing something. You are missing a mighty one. You're Obviously there's some void. You realize that there's something more than Mars and Jupiter and all these false Elohim that you've created by your own hands. There is something more. And he says that mighty one is Yahuwah. And this is what we're telling you today. And it may seem very foreign to you, but understand, my friends, his name is of ancient times. He revealed his name nearly 7,000 times in the Tanakh. And we see in Exodus chapter 3, it even tells us what his name means in the Hebrew. He said, Hayah, Sher Hayah, I am that I am. That, that word literally means Yah. Who is Yah? Yah, who, ah, okay? And it's very important to see this. He says, I make him known to you. In verse 24, he says, Yahuwah, who made the world and all that is in it, this one being master of heaven and earth, does not dwell in dwelling maids with hands, nor is he served with men's hands as if needing anything, himself giving to all life and breath 
and all else. The name Yahuwah. You can break it down in many ways. But no matter how you really break it down, it essentially means life giver and life force. Again, it's made up of two roots. The word Yah and Yah. Coming from Haya and Haya. The word means to exist perfectly, but perfect tense. When you put those two words together, it literally tells us that Yahuwah self-sustains. That He is the life giver of His own self. That He is His own breath. That He means no other. That He doesn't need sacrifice, but He wants you to give to Him a sacrifice of praise and to, to walk in His ways and to give Him honor and glory because He gives you all of life. 